Yo, this video was about when government informants took over FCI Beaumont in around 2001. This one is about when government informants took over FCI Beaumont. That means they was in charge of a prison. Not the stand-up men, but the government informants was in charge of the prison. Sit back and enjoy the ride, y'all. All right, you know what it is. Unique Mac Audio, man. I'm going to tell you about when the government informants, a.k.a. snitches, a.k.a. rats, when they took over the prison, the way it used to work, so you understand. When I first got in the system back in 93, they were sending a bunch of us in from the crack law, uh, you know, the mandatory minimum, and it was picking up a lot of drug dealers. And, you know, a lot of stand-up men was within that. And then we had, you know... Dudes that was, you know, the aggressive ones on the street, they started folding a lot of them. Not all of them, just a lot of them, you know? I'm trying to watch the words because this is YouTube. But now, they got these dudes. Let me get myself right here. They got these dudes, and we'll run them off the compound. We didn't even want them around us because after sitting in trial, seeing your best friend on you just like you seen with the... You know, YSL uh, trial with Thugger and his man Tick up there. And I'm going to do a video on Tick testifying and in the manner that he testified in because I see there's a lot of, you know, misunderstanding of how that played out that he took the stand for the government, but he's not really answering questions. I'm going to break that down in detail. So put it in the comments if you want me to do something on the YSL. I'll try and drop it later on the day, being that it's Friday, give you a double dose, okay? But now, back in the day, we used to run the rats off the compound. They couldn't even come on the compound with it. As soon as we seen a dude came and we knew he was a rat, we didn't care who we told on. He didn't have to tell on us or somebody. We knew he just had to tell, and we was putting the Bethel hand in it. Boom, airlifting him out of there. I mean, really trying to take these dudes out. Now... I remember when I was in, because, you know, I like to ride. <laughs> let me ride. <clears throat> All right, let me ride. I remember I was in Allenwood. It was an Italian dude that was on the compound, and, you know, he was kind of quirky, but he got along with everybody, but he was a stand-up man, so he was allowed to live with us. So while we on the compound, a bus come in, and he brings, I'm going to get the names, talk to one of my comrades and get the names right, you know? But he brings in... One a dude that comes off the bus and he brings him to the Italian car and say, yo, this is one of the Italian, he's a made man. And he was, he was a made man, he was official, he was all that, but he wound up flipping and working for the government. So the dude that was bringing him to him didn't know this. So when he brings him over there to the dude and he tells the Italians, oh, yo, this is such and such. And when he came over there, as soon as he came over and dude seen him, he recognized him, he knew him, and he knew what case he told on. He didn't even tell on his case, but he just turned around and cold cocked him. Bow! You know, bust him in his mouth, knocked him out, and stomped him out. So the dude that brought him over there is like, what are you doing? That's a made man. And he's running, he's bending over, he's trying to give him assistance because he's kind of quirky, so he got a little compassion. So he better, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he's like, you know, dude looked at him, and the dude just punched him in his face. Bow! You know what I mean? Knocked him out too. Two, left the two of them sitting out there. Now, the moral of that story is he's considered as a rat lover for bringing a rat to the men to try and say that he was one of them when he's already been exposed and compromised because he took the stand. But that's how serious it was, right? And only reason he didn't get the Bethlehem put in him is because they were just out there chilling and nobody had the joint on them, so they just, you know, knocked them out, hey, you know? So that's how the rats was being treated. Then they wound up going in a hole. They sit in a hole, you know what I mean? Sometimes for months, sometimes for years until they transfer, go through or decide where they could try and weed them in to put them because there was no compounds that was allowing rats of any kind on the compound at this time when I first came in. So as that went on, then... 
that's the same time when Bill Clinton signed in the thing and, you know, to build more prisons. And I think he gave $20 billion to build more prisons. That's where Big Sandy, Atwater, Victorville, uh, 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 McCurry, Hazleton, you know what I mean? That's where all these jails came from, from Bill Clinton's money that he put up from the government to the Justice Department to build more prisons. So as they built these prisons, they started watching who they send to open up the prisons. They could never send me to open up one of those prisons because, you know, I had the riot, uh, the alleged riot on my jacket, the alleged stabbing the two, two police on my jacket, the alleged turning the fan into a, a one-pop shooting pool balls at the police, busting through chicken wire and glass. So, you know, they figured they could never send me there because when they open up a new joint, they never send any went to the compound that was involved in a food strike, you know, or riot or assaulting police because they anticipate it to be quirks when they opening up the jails and they know the food is not going to be right. They know the officers is not going to be trained right because at the same time when Bill Clinton signed that bill in, he signed it in to persuade the people to build the prisons in their neighborhoods that they would offer them jobs by giving the local people first dibs and priority at working in the prisons. So on the strength of that, even though they didn't want a penitentiary in their backyard, could they figure somebody, you know, escaped and got out that, you know, once they escaped and got out that, you know, they'll be able to get to the community. But once they said they'll give them jobs and it was rural areas that they put the prisons in, it wasn't no jobs, they jumped on it and, you know, hook, line, and sinker. So now, when they did that, they had to watch who they sent there. So they sent old-timers that haven't had incident reports, dudes that kind of conformed and wanted to change their life over, you know, and just become a better person. You know, they sent them there because they knew that, you know, they was going to still comply with the administration. They wasn't going to balk. They wasn't going to send nobody like me in there that had that fire in me or, uh, you know, Lou Sims or nothing. They wasn't going to send them in there because they know if they send us in there, we're not going for nothing. So they sent the ones that was laid down and, you know, would go for anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just wanted to do their time in peace. So that's what they sent. So you understand. So now when they send them in there and they handpicked them, so the guys that had lower security points that were still in the penitentiary, even though they was violent at one time in the streets, on in the prison and so on, they still sent them there because now they're laid back and they let them open the prison and hope those guys kind of conform the other inmates that's coming in to follow their lead that this is how you lay back, this is how you do time. So they definitely didn't want to send nobody in there was going to buck because they anticipated like a, a food strike, a work strike, you know, and, you know, just not putting up with all the police patting you down and being disrespectful with the shakedowns. So they put the guys that could deal with that. Then after they get up and running, they waited 18 months. And after 18 months of, you know, the police being trained proper, um, the inmates running accordingly the way they want them to run, then they'll start bringing in, you know, guys like me that, you know, had the alleged, you know, riot assault on police, you know, weapons in the prison and all of that. Then they'll start bringing us in. Because I remember, you know, let me ride. You know, I like to ride. I'm riding with y'all. I remember when I was trying to get to FCI Terminal Island. Y'all in California know where Terminal Island is. That was the best kept secret in the BOP. It definitely one of them, but I called it the best kept because it was right on Long Beach. And the prison was right there on the beach where you could sit in the yard and see the beach and see the people going by on the jet skis. The girls used to pull their shirts up, let you see their tatas. So, you know, I've been in prison a minute I wanted to see some tatas you know so I was trying to get out there so I could just lay back and do my time I was just coming out of ADX this was like 99 I got locked up in 93 so I had three years in so it took them two years to spin me to tell me they were trying to get my perfect work together and da 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 so by 2001 when I had eight years in you know they put me in so now I think I'm going out there but I winds up in Lump Park Penitentiary. As soon as I get there, all hell break loose. They shooting dope, you know what I mean? Bringing in dope, stabbing people. It was so much money in Lump Park that you couldn't even sell stamps to the inmates. See, this is normally the money. So dudes will run around every week when they owe money, and they'll come and they'll buy like 25 books for 100. It's five books a piece, you know, for each joint. So 20 books is for $100. Um, 
if you go into the commissary, you know, but if you go to commissary, the dudes that's, you know, got the dope or the ticket or making the money on the compound, whether they're cleaning rooms or they're selling vegetables or selling meat out the kitchen or whatever, you know, they'll give them like 25 books for a hundred. So you buy the 25 books, you get an extra five books to pay off your debt. So you bought them in a hundred dollar stack. But out in Lompoc, you couldn't even buy stamps. It was so much money because the administration didn't care about nothing because they was the ones that was allowing, you know, the inmates to bring in the heroin and stuff because that's an older prison like Lum Park, Terry Hutt, Leavenworth, you know, Atlanta, those type of prisons. You got police that's been there for 40, 50 years and they just trying to make it. They let you do what you got to do as long as you don't touch the police. Like I told you, when I got to Lewisburg, the first thing they told me was, I know you're a kingpin and I know you deal with a lot of drugs. I don't have a problem with you bringing the drugs on my compound because we need the drugs to keep our people working at the Unicorn factory because that's how we make our money. So you could bring in the drugs for that, but just don't touch our police. And so they asked me, you know, but when I seen them trying to kill my man, Mike Wagner out of uh, Ohio, I had to jump in. You know what I mean? My, 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 my compassionate side kicked in. My empathy side kicked in. They had my man on the ground, right? And while they had him on the ground, they trying to handcuff him. See your hands? So they take one hand and they put it down behind his back. This hand up here, they trying to put it over his head to bring it down behind his back. And they're breaking the joints. And he's yelling, ah, ah. You know, he even said, man, I give. Because he took, he took it as a joke. He was just a joke. He was a big young dude that was just down for anything. So to him, it was just a big game, you know, us against them cops and robbers. So he's yelling, I give, while they're trying to cuff him like this. And they're yelling, oh, nigga, where's your Farrakhan at now? Because this was during the Middle Man March in October two, uh, 1995. They're where's your Farrakhan at now, nigga? And they stomping him, and I'm sitting there watching him, and this is my brother. You know what I mean? Even though he started it, you know, he wrong. But, you know, when they wrong, you deal with it. And, and then when you get him in private, then you check him. That's the way we do it. So... The police was supposed to be doing their job, but they wasn't doing their job. They were being excessive. And my man yelling, I give. So I just jumped in with a joint, just started swinging to get on ball for And a couple of other brothers jumped in, and we jumped in, and we freed them. And then they beat us up, bust us in the head. And, you know, they let us go back to the unit. They bust us in the head that night. They came in 1 o'clock in the morning and said, oh, no, these dudes went at us. We're going to get them, but we're going to catch them while they sleep. You know the feds like to run in 4 or 5 in the morning and catch you. But they came 1 o'clock in the morning shooting tear gas. So that's when, you know, I allegedly hooked the fan up to shoot the pool ball, did what I had to do. All this a movie. I know I'm talking fast, but keep up. I got things to do this morning. I'm getting ready to do an interview with Eon Bick. So now that's where we at, right? So, you know, let's ride back, you know. Let's ride back. So now they opened up a prison called FCI Beaumont. Now, when they opened up Beaumont, there wasn't a lot of people that was from that little, that area there that was trying to get to Beaumont. Everybody was trying to get to the FCI you know, was from other areas. But if you was in Beaumont prison, they'll just send you right across the compound and figure if you survive right there, you know, that you'll be able to survive, you know, when you get back to your neighborhood and you'll comply with the FCI, which means Federal Correctional Facility, which is a medium security. But right now we're in a high max in a penitentiary setting. So they go and they send them over there. So when they send them over there, the stand-up men go, go over there and one of the brothers came back, you know what I mean? And he all lumped up. Stand up man. Always, always been. Like, official. You know what I mean? But they jumped him when he got the FCI, you know, Beaumont. They jumped him. You know, beat him up, swole his eye up, swole his face up, lip busted, and they sent him back to the pen. Like, get your tough, non-snitching ass up out of here. It's what they actually did. You know what I mean? I know a lot of brothers might not like me even putting it out there, but, you know, I'm a journalist now, so I put the good and the bad. At this time, in about 2001, the rats was running, you know, FCI Beaumont. You know what I mean? So not to say nothing bad about the brothers from Texas, but, you know, they put all the rats from all over there, and they kind of... We'd let them formulate, you know, a, a community of rats. And they even had the dude that had the plane with the children, you know, the SA charges and, you know, the R, ch R charges against the females. Dudes that we wouldn't allow around us. As soon as we saw their paperwork that this is what they was into, they got the Bethel hand put in them, just so you understand. But now they put them all on one compound first and they got together and, you know, with the killer rats that they got there. Because you still, even though a dude told, don't mean he's a coward. 
Let's get that right. You know, we know he's a coward from a moral and, and principle standard point of view, but physically and violent, with violence, you know, in his heart, he's still going to push that Bethel hand and he's still going to fight, you know, for his honor, even though he surrendered that, you know, just so you understand. So now... All the killer rats got together with the essays and the dudes with the eight uh, R charges and, you know, they put a coalition together saying that whenever anybody come here that's, you know, a stand-up man, we got to get them as soon as they come. We're not going to let them group up. You know what I mean? And, you know, it might only been a few of them that really had it like that, right? Now, um, do, uh, do they have inmates that... Uh, or never known as rats. Yeah, see, that's what those are the ones I don't like. See, you know, when a dude rat, as long as he tells me he's a rat, I know how to deal with him. And we all right. You know what I mean? We all right. That don't mean we friends. That don't mean I'm going to your house to do dinner. But I could interview you and we could talk even though I know you're a rat because I want the people to hear both sides. I don't want to just give them my side and be biased. But the ones that I can't stand that I call rat bastards is the ones that try and hide and say that they a wolf, you know what I mean? When they already been compromised and started working with the police. Once you started doing that, just tell a man, yo, they broke me, I couldn't do the time. And then, I don't respect what you did, but I respect you standing up that you's a rat bastard. You understand what I'm saying? But that don't mean I respect you as a rat bastard. And that don't even mean that I respect you. You know, the same way you see a skunk and you respect that respectfully, that's a skunk. So respectfully, that's a rat bastard. You know what I mean? And that's all I'm saying. But now if a dude say, man, I couldn't do the time I had to get back to my family, I'd be like, yo, I don't agree with it. I did what I had to do because there's a lot of people that said that I was a fool because I gave up my children, my family, to stand on the morals and principles of the code of the street. So they said, you're a fool. You left your babies to be raised by others to go to prison to be loyal to the street. You know what I mean? But I was in the street before these babies. So my first oath was made to the streets. So now that these babies came, I have to still honor my first oath. I can't readjust it like these rat bastards try and readjust. When they get caught, they try and make excuses for telling. No, once you make an oath and you give your word, you stand on it and you fall on your sword before you let that oath fail. It's not that hard. That's why I say don't get involved with street. Don't do it. It's not worth it. So none of this is to glamorize anything or glorify anything. It's just to give you the real. But at this time in 2001, you know, the, 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 the rat bastards, you know what I mean, that didn't want to just admit that they was, you know, rat bastards and take their whooping and their Bethel hand put up in them or none of that, you know what I mean, you know, like the rat bastards they are. You know, so instead they come together and now when they come, when you come to a new compound, before you come, the first person that knows is the medical, you know, the psychology, and then the laundry. Because the laundry have to get your bed, bed road ready, your clothes ready, and they have to give all of this to you. And then they take it to a nice shiny cell like I have behind you. That's ADX Supermax cell, you know what I mean? So um, we got this, right? So now the laundry list come and... We could tell where a person is from by his numbers. Like, my number was 054 is my last four numbers. That meant New York. Or, or 053 is Jersey. 077, I mean, o, um, 007 is uh, Washington, D.C., and so is 000. 000, if you see that, that means that's an old-timer that's been in the system a long time that they brought over from, the, from um, Lawton over into the feds, and they just gave them their last three numbers as triple zero. But then as it went on, then they started giving them uh, 007. I guess that's for like James Bond, you know? But, you know, I don't want none of your kids to have to go through this, so we don't want to put your kids in any danger. So, you know, that way they don't have to follow the code to that. Because I know I'm twisted to give up my freedom and my children and my family and my lovely mother who's 88 years old to take life plus 20 for 28, 26 and a half years, you know? So I don't want you to have to be put in that situation that I was put in, man. 
you know, but that's what that was. So now they got the killer rats there. It comes to the laundry. So the laundry sees the last four numbers of where you're from. So what they do is they break the list down, and everybody from Virginia was, I think, 083, and Baltimore was 038. So if somebody, if they took all the people from that had 08, uh, 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 083, and they'll give them the list of all the names that's from 083, and they'll take the um, 03, uh, 038, give it to all the Baltimore people, all the 054, uh, give them to all the New York people, and so on and so on, you know? So once they do that now, we got the list in the cars of who's coming. So then we ask each other, you know who this is, you know who this is? And then we have somebody, we send them to the law library. This is how intricate it was. They go to the law library and they go looking on the computer. When they go look on the computer, they put their name in. And once you put their name in, you check their appeal and then you get to see what they did. If they didn't even find an appeal nine times out of ten, they wasn't right. So when they come, they have that question and answer. But if we see in the um, computer that they actually testified or that there was a rat bastard, as soon as they came off, they got the joint put in them soon they came and they got you know airlifted you know went to the outside hospital and then they went to sit in the shoe until they figured out what they're gonna do with them which we didn't care we just wanted to keep our grounds clean so nobody could say that we harbored rats on our compound all that wound up changing later on in time i'm break that down in another video so now we got that so the laundry list come, and if they come, we run them off. But now, in 2001 in FCI Beaumont, the rats got the laundry list, and they look for all the stand-up men. So if they see a stand-up man come in, they automatically waited for him, but they didn't want to leave the compound, so all they did was just put the mitts on and beat them up and the SIS and everything. The most they'll do is give them a 200-series fighting charge and put them back on the compound. They didn't have to worry about coming back amongst the men. But the administration allowed this because they wanted them to run the compound. So they let the inmates keep the compound clean. So in this case, it's the rats, you know? So they got the rat bastards, you know, keeping the compound clean. And then now they come, they run them up. So one of the homies, you know, I'm not even gonna say where he's from, but you know, cause, cause I, you know, I'm gonna keep it 100. Cause they didn't have no picks. They don't care if you're from New York, Detroit, Philly, DC, Baltimore, you know, Miami. If you was a stand-up man and you came to FCI Beaumont in 2001, you know, they would run you in. You know what I mean? And they was only, we was only coming there like, you know, one at a time they would send us there so that, you know, we wouldn't be able to group up and do anything. So as they did that now, they sent them over there and the rats ran them up. And dudes would come back over to Beaumont, right, um, to the penitentiary and they'd be like, man... You know, they all swole up. Dude, like, dude, you just went to SCI. What happened? And we know he's a stand-up man. But, of course, you know, we clowns. We going to laugh at him. Like, man, we, you go get beat up and ran off the compound as soon as you get there. And that's when they let us know that, nah, man, the rats done took over that compound. And, you know, as soon as I got off the bus, it was like 15 of them, man. They just jumped me and went to whooping me and all that. So one of the reputable homies said, man, I wish I would go over there. You know what I mean? I wish... They would send me over there and them dudes do that to me. Because if they do that to me, when I come back to the compound, I'm running their whole car in. And when they say they whole car, meaning the rats was rats from all over the country that band together. So you had, you know, uh, you know, rats from every state, every geographical location, and every gang and all of that was out there. So that's the way they did it, you know? Only one thing stay. Oh, let me tell you what a stand-up man is when we talk about penitentiary. Stand-up man is a man that stands on moralism principles for those that understand. A man that went to trial. A man that don't tell on his comrade. A man that honors his word. You know what I mean? That's what a stand-up man is in prison. Stand-up man on the street is a man that go to work, take care of his family, and stay the hell out of jail. That's the ultimate stand-up man. But once we crossed over into the street, we had a whole nother set of codes that I'm trying to prevent the youth from having a major that decision by telling them about these stories so that's all my videos is about and i know it's helping because i get these phone calls on my phone don't even know where oh, it's in my pocket don't even know where it come from you know what i mean but they hit me from all over you know call me at 917 the number's on the screen 917 Six eight zero ninety ninety one. So that's what happened with that. So we that's what a stand up man is. So you know. But anyway, so they ran him over, and the homie was like, "Man, if they send me over there, and them people jump me like that, them, them, them rat bastards." I'm telling you, when I come back over this joint, 
I'm punishing every, I'm running their whole car off the compound. Even they stand up men. We going at them. You know what I mean? You know, and you know, I, I like I said, I ain't gonna get no names, but you know, that was a DC dude that said that. You know what I mean? And, and you know, a couple of do y'all brothers. So they already, you know, had the band that, you know, if that happened, this is how we gonna handle it, you know? So, you know, it, it was just real funny because the rats actually ran the compound, you know, and the essays, you know? But that finally got broken up. This is how it got broken up. That got broken up because we in Texas and it's, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, Mexicans, you know? Y'all want to say Hispanic. This is not to disrespect the Mexicans. They say a lot of blacks. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of Italians, a lot of Mexicans. So it's not a disrespect for the trolls and flip-flop wing and public rat bastards. You know what I mean? So it was a lot of Mexicans on the compound. So it was more of them over there at the time because this is in their geographical background. So what happened is they, it was two TIs went over there, a TS went over there, you know, Texas Syndicate. They sent two of them at one time, not realizing what they were doing over to the compound. And as soon as they got over the compound, it being that it was two of them, they could watch each other's back. They just went at all the rats, you know what I mean? And weeded them out. And then the other stand-up men that was laying back, that was just trying to do their time, of course, you know, now they had no choice. They got involved and they wound up breaking it up by, you know, you know, uh, uh, hitting them up with the Bethel hand and running off the rat bastards and everything. And it turned into a regular FCI now because now my man is there and they try and keep it a little bit in order, even though they still have a lot of rat bastards, you know, whittling in between that's acting like they tough. And the dudes know they, they rat bastards, but, you know, oh, didn't hit the gunshot. You know, they know that they rat bastards. And, uh, you know, so they just tell them, you stay over there, we stay over here. And that's it. And that's the way we run that. You know what I mean? Because dudes trying to go home, been in 20, 30 years years, they ain't trying to get into it, you know, if we got to live together, y'all live in your hole over there, the same way when you lived in our apartments, you know, you stayed in the walls, you know, so now y'all stay in the walls of the prison and leave us the hell alone. So, that you know, big round of applause to the TS, Texas Syndicate. <laughs> Gotta give props where it's due. All right, all right, all right, relax, man, relax. Can I finish telling you the story? Man, man, the Texas Syndicate get their thing. You know what I mean? And get their prop because they was the ones that went over. It's two of them. I don't even want to call their names unless I get in touch with them. They want their names out there because that's how real we run this gangster channel. You know what I mean? So now, you know, they went over there and they broke that up by busting them up. Boop, 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 boop. And they broke it up. So now they break it up and it became a regular compound. But I wanted to tell that story about how the rats ran the compound at FCI Boma in approximately 2001. So now they make you know, uh, what they call that, uh, Arizona, you know, they got to join in Arizona, uh, Terry Hutt, um, you know, I think even Otisville now, you know, they make these joints where, you know, they put these type of people on there, you know, the, 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 the rat bastards, you know, the people with playing with kids, SA charges, you know, the uh, ones that do stuff against women, the R charges, they throw all of them on the one compound. And they already know they all sour, you know, along with the rat bastards, you know what I mean? And that's where they even wear flip-flops in the day room and in the yard, at, in, you know, in these type of places because, you know, they, they all know that they sour. So they over there, they doing their thing, and we doing our thing in our corner. So now, that's why, you know, the dude that, you know, hit up Derek Chauvin, the guy that was involved, uh, convicted of the George Floyd situation, he hit him 22 times. One time for every time, for every year that he got in prison. And that dude dropped his flag, if I'm not mistaken, but he wasn't right amongst his peers, and he did that because it was in his heart to do what was right under the street code and the gang code, even though he violated and he wasn't a part of the gang or the street no more. In his heart, he still was, so he did what he felt had to be done. So he grabbed him, not caring that he's a uh, Mexican and he's a white dude and an ex-cop. He just said he was a cop. He violated. Well, I'm going to punish him because that's what's supposed to be done. So at least, hopefully, he's thinking, maybe in his mind, you know, he can't tell what another man thinking, that when he gets amongst his comrades, he can say that it happened because of this and it happened. Be you know, in other words, I, you know, I dropped the flag, I violated, I did this, but I also hit up Derek Chauvin for the George Floyd situation, you know, to hold it down, to put our, you know, our flag on the map. So give me another hearing, see if you can get me back in. You know, you know that ain't going to work, but, you know, that's how they think in their mind sometimes. But that's where it said I'm going to tap out, been on 
on here long enough. Make sure you cop the book, Aurora in Harlem. And make sure you buy the merchandise. Merchandise link is in the joint. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on Instagram. Cash app is on the screen. You know what time it is. So let's tap out. All right. Cheers. 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 The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. Hey. Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix, yeah. what he mentions a gift, Trust. you stand up ten toes down and I suggest you pay attention to this, Real. take a little gully posse and put it in hall, uh -huh. he cut from the bottom, Back. came up from the bottom, Back. drop the book, you should go and get it, go an Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit, yeah. then you could consider yourself LinkedIn, Real. sit front row and get juice from a kingpin, uh -huh. how he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it, uh -huh. did not pay attention would be stupid, it's talking about the man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was whining. Whine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. Baby yeah. horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community ours. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.